Aloha. You're watching the state of the state of Hawaii on, on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, I'm your host, Stephanie Stahl Dalton. Our program is on Mondays at this time, three o'clock every other week. And this uh, is Hawaii's campaign season. So uh, we are showcasing candidates for the um, election who are running in the elections this year uh, for office. And today's candidate is special. She uh, is a first time candidate, which certainly makes her special, although all of them are very special. But we are interested to know what, what that experience is like for a person who's just uh, joining the ranks of the, um, those seeking office. Now, I would like to um, just mention that she has, um, she seeks uh, Takeshi Ono's seat, which he held for about a decade and all that time she worked for him. So I'm really pleased to welcome to the show, the State of the State of Hawaii, Jenna Takanuchi. So hi, Jenna, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me, Stephanie. It's good that you could come and talk about your, your candidacy and your plans for being an elected official of the state of Hawaii for the State House District 27. So first of all, um, what, why don't you tell us what, what comprises District 27? So um, what are the communities, neighborhoods in that? In that sure. Place? Yeah, so we had a little bit of a change after reapportionment earlier this year. Um, so Old District 27 already had Liliha, Alava Heights, Pu'unui, um, parts of Nu'uanu, um, kind of down to Palama. Um, now the lines have shifted a little bit east, so um, the new areas are actually going to jump to the other side of the poly as well. So we gained Nu'uanu Valley, Dowsett, Pacific Heights, Pa'oa Valley, um, Punchbowl, and all the way up to Papakalea. So a lot of new people to also <laughs> join up with us here. Yeah, wow. That, that, is it bigger now? <laughs> Uh, geographically, it's it's pretty big, <laughs> but yeah, I had about about twenty eight to thirty thousand residents, right? It's yeah, I I think they they try to it all up the same, so it should be about um twenty 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 five maybe thousand, okay. but yeah, but well, pretty yeah, big geographic yeah. area. <laughs> That's quite a few doors to try a dog. <laughs> But yes, I, I'm finding that out, but it's good. <laughs> There's a lot of voters, but that's really good too. You know, you can go almost uh, every couple of doors, knock, say hi to somebody, um, get to talk to them. So that's that's been really good. Yeah. So you are doing that. You're you're working up house to house. Yes, yes. I started a little earlier this year. Um, it's been the biggest part of the campaign so far. Um, you know, try and get out there. Um, even um, earlier this year, I just started taking off from work. Now I've kind of shifted more to kind of full-time campaigning um, as many hours as I can, if I can even, I did an hour just before I came down here to get ready for this interview actually, and talk with you guys um, just cause I could squeeze it in. Um, just trying to meet as many people um, as possible out there. That is admirable. I, I, would, I thought that maybe in Hawaii, you got excused from some doors because you're standing on the street with a big sign right so i thought maybe there was a little trade-off there but probably not you still got me out. yeah it's, it's still the best way to kind of hear everybody get to know them um and people people in this area are really nice um i i i i've really enjoyed meeting them um you mentioned i actually work for the current incumbent takashi ono um i've been in his office but i've always been you know behind the computer or um, on the phone. So it's been like super nice to like match like the email address or like the name to like the person when I'm like knocking on their door and saying hi to them. Yeah, that's been really fun. <laughs> well, I mean, I hope that that means your entry into your first campaign and getting started is a little bit eased because you do know him and what he did and the, and the, and the districts changed a bit. At, right? Because now for you, your district, though, will be a little bit different than what he had. But nevertheless, is that easing you into your first campaign? Um, I think it gives me a little bit of a background, maybe, like, you know, um, about what people have been concerned about in the past, like the kinds of issues that have been in the communities. But as far as being easy, it, it is a whole different thing being the being the person with their face on the banner, being the name on the sign, being the one um, having to answer people's questions directly instead of, you know, just on behalf of um, somebody else. That, that, that part's been a little um, 
challenging for me sometimes. <laughs> it's not my natural state to be so um, kind of extroverted about that kind of thing about like promoting myself. So that that's been a little um, weird for me. But yeah, I definitely think um, I, I think the people I've met, the residents I've met so far, have like appreciated that you know I, I know and that I have been really deeply involved in kind of the projects or the community issues that, that they've been um, concerned about all this time. Well, what are you? Well, all right. So, how are you transitioning into that, Jenna? As you said, you've been working uh, in another mode, in another role, and so here, all of a sudden, as you say, you're. It's all about you, and you haven't probably made it all about you prior to this, but now it's all about you. So, how are you? How are you managing that? What's the transition? What What's that feeling like for you? Um, it honestly, it's it's. It has been challenging for me. Um, I am not the kind of person who usually does this kind of thing <laughs> for 10 years, like every once in a while, you know, um, because I've been with Rep Ono for so long, people would just ask me, you know, oh, you know, it's kind of joke. We're like, when are you running next? And for years and years and years, I was just like, no, you know, that's not for me. I don't want to be the one um, front facing. I can't do that. Um, but I think after, you know, kind of doing the work and feeling really connected to both the work we do legislatively and connected to a lot of the things that I've done with the community. Um, I just kind of thought, hey, like, why not? Maybe, maybe I can do this. And so that was my first kind of took my toe in to make that decision. And now that I'm kind of out there just waiting in, tr trying my best, <laughs> seeing what it feels like, it, it, it's definitely kind of surreal. But um, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I, I do feel um, confident that, yes, the work I have been doing already will transition well into being able to actually be the be that person who's leading um to kind of uh, take that spot as the state rep and i i hope the community sees that too um i i've gotten some good feedback from them if they like you know they remember they worked with me on a project or um that kind of thing and that's been nice to hear well what happens when you go door to door tell tell us a little bit about how how you manage that first door and then what happens as you go from door to door and what what do people say what do they want to do with you when you show up and they know who you are sure um i mean i think it varies um some people you know if you catch them at a good time they're ready to talk story about like what's happening in the community um about what's going on um uh i mean it, it's definitely it was intimidating for me to like be the one to kind of approach them <laughs> and not you know i have something come into the office so that, that that was a little um scary for me at first to kind of put myself out there but people people in these areas are very nice very friendly um they know they a lot of people long time families people have lived here for generations you know they, they really do want to talk about you know what they're seeing the changing neighborhoods things that are concerning to them um and their families um so it, it's been nice and yeah if they make the connection to the office you know sometimes we'll just talk about all the things you know they hope that we'll continue on. Um, we do. We have worked very hard, um, Rep. Ono and I, to kind of um, build this little community through the office. You know, pushing out information to the um, constituents about anything we get in the office. Because I know it's so hard to like keep track of everything, and we're kind of this conduit that like funnels all this information. So, you know, we we've tried really hard to email and mail and just like um, push out information to them. Um, be kind of like a hub if they have questions about any any kind of anything, even if it's not directly related to, you know, his office to, to state government. And I, that's the kind of thing I hope to kind of continue to help people do. I, I know they really appreciate it because the government's big. And sometimes I think they just need help kind of people just need help like navigating all the information, all the resources that are out there. But, yeah. So they so they are um, not intimidated by you I, when you come up and your your intention is to be open and <laughs> and uh, interested in them knowing more about you. So do you get anybody that says, oh, I've been waiting for you? These are the things that you know I've been struggling with or this neighborhood area has been. Do you have any people that are ready for you? I mean, once they realize who you are and they welcome you, then do you see the brain start to light up? And sure, go, yes. Oh, cancer. So what do they say? What are some of the, the themes that you're picking up? In yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, you know, definitely people, when they realize they have the opportunity, they do have their laundry list of things ready to go. Um, I think the biggest thing uh, I'm kind of hearing about, which I think a lot of communities are also um, kind of experiencing, is just people are very concerned about crime and safety. Um, um, I think 
definitely pandemic. I think a lot of us have heard that um, that is exasperating this. A lot of theft, a lot of car break-ins, home break-ins. Um, I know um, in certain pockets of the area, they're seeing an increase of strangers kind of just in the area. And because these these communities here are like so you know close knit, like they know their neighbors, they know um, whose cars, who they know when somebody new is moving in. So. Um, it's been very troubling to them to see like so many just random people coming through the neighborhood. Um, and a lot of those um, instances probably are tied to, you know, crime and um, that kind of thing. Like, is, that, is that the sort of thing? Okay, so what can you say about that? Do you, um, is that a metropolitan police? Um, I mean, is that really their bailiwick? Or I mean, what, what, is, what do you say when people bring that up? And have you come up with something to say to people to give them a little, a little confidence and that something can go on behind the scenes here to make it better. What what do you do about that? Sure. I mean, I think, um, well, their concerns of crime are also really kind of linked to um, a lot of homelessness and homeless encampments that are kind of popping up around the district as well. And I know both those things, are, there's, there's no right, like one answer that's going to solve that kind of issue or answer. Um, I mean, definitely, like, I talked to them about continuing outreach to local um, police um, enforcement, doing what we can, clearing out, you know, people, uh, making reports um, as we can. And I guess, you know, on, on the larger scale level, if I were to get in to be able to kind of work on programs and services that are kind of going to be able to help people get out of these situations to um, prevent crime or, prevent, you know, like, especially these thefts and break-ins that we're seeing happening um, to get people kind of on their feet and stabilized so that they don't have to resort to those kind of activities. But you don't feel any, uh, it, you don't feel any sense of threat when you're going around door to door, all right? I mean, in the community. Are you Oh, feeling me personally? Yeah. Oh, or no, um, I, I feel very safe. Um, it's daylight hours. I, I think because yeah, I, I know the, a lot of the areas, um, that I'm walking through, um, I, I feel safe as I'm doing that. Yeah, definitely. I have called in a couple, I, I have made a couple reports though, when, when I saw like things happening, <laughs> just as I was going by kind of suspicious activity or someone like using, you know, like the outlet in someone else's garage and things like that, but who, who is obviously not the resident. Um, but I, I mean, it, it's been far and few between. Um, I, I can definitely see wh why the residents are concerned about it, but, um, I mean, me myself, I feel fine walking door to door. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was looking at your website and I noticed, well, of course, like, like all of the candidates, do you wait for people to ask you to put signs in the yard? I know that it's very convenient that, well, here's your website. So people can take a look at that. If you want to have a, a, a sign, it looks like you just can put, say yes on the website and you'll get a sign there. Right. And that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. or, do you, or do you go, do you go around and ask people? if they want signs. How do you, how, what, what are some of the nuts and bolts of getting started with campaigning? Stuff? Sure, yeah, that's a mix of everything. That's still something I'm figuring out. Um, definitely um, anyone who wants a sign, please yes, go to the website and I'm happy to <laughs> bring a sign to you to put up um, on your fence or in your yard. Um, yeah, as I'm going door to door, sometimes I'll um, just ask people who, if we have a good conversation and they um, indicate they're supportive of me, likely vote for me, ask if um, they'd be willing to put a sign up for me. A big part of it, though, has been uh, my mom, team mom. <laughs> team mom has been out there um, looking for good spots, knocking on doors herself on my behalf, asking people. Um, yeah, and then connecting me with them so I can say hello and thank them for <laughs> the support. Um, but yeah, kind of kind of combination of all those kind of three things: outreach, do, doing outreach, meeting people, and just that kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's fabulous. You've got Team Mom, and I think your pictures on the web shop site show some other people are helping you out too, right? You've got the whole family going. Sure. Yeah, my family has been really great. Um, they've been really excited for me. Um, so my family's um kind of from been from the area anyway my uh, so my grandma who's on the website too uh, my grandma lives in the Lava Heights um and um I have family also who kind of as I was growing up me and my sister were growing up we um you know spent every day after school and like all the breaks in Putinui because my parents were working so it was really exciting when I started working for Takashi that um I was able to kind of work in this area in this community that I already knew and then 
since I already know that Paul is joining the district, it's also been kind of exciting because that's where I grew up until I was like in college. Um, we grew up in Pooa Valley, so me and my sister went to uh, Pooa, then Quantico Middle School and Roosevelt High School. So it's 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 kind of funny. It's like sometimes I'm like, oh wow, it's like kind of coming full circle, even yes. <laughs> to kind of do this job. <laughs> well, that's really it because you've got some skin in the game. I mean, it's your real home. You're rooted. You're root. You're local and rooted, and that that really makes a big difference. Well, tell me now about the um the the work of it, which is about legislating, but it's also about making sure you know what are the major issues. So how how do you think about now at this point? Because you're not there yet. I mean, you've still got lots to learn and, and ways to to grow into this. But what do you what are you doing when you're hearing from all these people? Are you learning more than about the issues which you need to know from the grassroots up? And then then there much there's much more that you have to learn about it because I noticed in your in your write-ups that you know you you seem to intend to promote work among the agencies of the city the common the county and the state and i think that that going from you know the roots and trying to figure out things there and then going to try and do something about these megalithic uh entities that you you're going to enlist them in working together and, and helping out so how do you see that's going to go and how can you get started on that I mean, sure. I think a big thing that I really learned, you know, working as a staff member in the office all this time is, you know, because I was just very involved in the process of like helping people solve their problems, whether it's like, you know, a small thing, like, you know, they just need a new sign installed, or if it's a big thing, like they actually want to change a law and to be able to just kind of see and hear and know the importance of having that kind of collaboration among all the stakeholders and all the parties i think that's a really big thing i learned as a staff member you know definitely you want to hear like you have a resident who has an issue and they bring it to you and you need to like understand where they're coming from um you know as in the day-to-day -day. and then when we're looking for a solution that's when you know it's been really great to work with a lot of the departments and kind of gain perspective on okay like um <clears throat> Like what are what are the things that are hindering them from just making this change that the person's asking for? Um, and if we can't do um, exactly what they're looking to do, is there an alternative? If the issue is speeding and they want speed bumps, is that and but well, we can't put down the road? Is there something else that we can do instead that just addresses the issue? Um, and that kind of collaboration, I think, has been really um, great to be able to do. Um, I do hope when it comes to collaboration to, uh, as a legislator um, on like these bigger issues to deal with bills um, on the legislative side, to hope to be able to do the same kind of thing, have an open office, have the residents feel um, able to come and voice their concerns about bills um, and issues um, to address the needs that they're seeing in the community um, while working on the other side about how we're going to implement them practically with the departments. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of the nexus between the people in the neighborhood and then the, the legislature and uh, the, the house. Um, yeah. So, so that that's such I mean, that just covers so many levels. And uh, um, and 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 you have people that will tell me about then an example of that. I like the speed bump one. So if people <laughs> have that they're complaining about the, the racing around with the cars. Right. So then somebody suggests the speed bump. So then you go to the neighbor, how do you work through that? How do you take that issue and work with it to, to make uh, for an outcome that will be beneficial for the community? Sure, I mean, I think that's just, um, I guess, seeing if what the issue actually is. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's just in enforcement. So maybe we can just work with HPD to get um, more presence and you know people know the, the police are going to be around maybe they won't tend to speed along this one stretch as much or maybe that's not the actual issue the actual issue is that the roadway is not um is just so wide and so you know like open and straight that people just want to speed down it and then maybe there's a physical change that we can make to the road um through one of the either the state or the city um uh departments to kind of make those kind of adjustments um i mean i i think it's just really kind of taking a case-by-case -case basis and seeing what the actual issue is and what people are experiencing and what they're trying to solve and how we're going to get that done well were you uh involved with the incumbent then in, in trying to 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 activate the the pieces of the government that can 
can work on these these uh, issues. For instance, um, can you call up the police department and say, you know, over there on Haile Kauila Street, we, you know, there's a problem. And is that the kind of thing you can do in your role as an elected official? Is that how it works, or how do how do you relate to? Oh, I mean, yeah, the office can definitely put in requests to the other um, city and state agencies. Um, I don't know if they're always going to listen <laughs> to exactly what we're <laughs> going to do, but the hope is to actually, you know, um, build, build those relationships so that they're willing to kind of like work on these kind of collaborative solutions with us. I think that would be um, the end goal to kind of, you know, like form these strong relationships both through the office, but also like for, for everybody actually. So like, even with the communities, the community knows that like the agencies are going to be responsive as well to their needs. I think it's kind of a, roundabout kind of way to kind of build those collaborative relationships. Well, what about the budgets for all of that? I mean, is this, is it set up so that, I mean, can you tell people that when you get into, what can you tell people when you get into office about how you can work on these things? And um, with through these agencies working together, promoting that, learning better how to smooth that, uh, enact that to, to the benefit of the citizens. But then what about all of the budget issues that go along with that? So can you talk a little bit about how you see that working and your your role there and how you're gonna grow into it? Sure. Um, I mean, definitely everything costs money. <laughs> That's what we know. And every year, definitely the budget is the biggest bill that we pass, having to divvy up all those funds for all the programs, all the projects. Um, Definitely from things that I'm hearing, um, I'm happy to go and d definitely go behind and support um, strengthening our services, our our, um, our programs and support for service providers um, doing outreach to the homeless in the area. Um, I think that's definitely great. Um, we already work collaboratively with the governor's coordinator in homelessness to kind of you know, do outreach to the encampments that people are reporting to try and relocate some of those people. But I know it takes time. It's not um, a one shot thing every single time. They definitely need funds to kind of get their people and their staff out there happy to I'm um, uh, definitely tell people that, yeah, like that's something we should definitely continue to support funding in the budget um, and other projects. Um, I know this area has had a lot of infrastructure work, which I know they're a little tired of, <laughs> but um, definitely they're going to see the difference and hopefully the longevity of this work for years to come and you know ad addressing those infrastructure issues also um as they come up so that there, there, there's no big so, emergency you, there. yeah well you're talking about the ones that i had seen that your incumbent um um that that um mr ono had worked on which were these um cesspool conversions and i think um and it the, is that the uh, a major example um, of the kind of infrastructure that you're talking about? No, um, Cesspool hasn't really been an issue in this community so much. Um, they have, we have had a lot of work, uh, road work and uh, kind of like sewer infrastructure also though. Um, right now they're finishing up um, the Pulley Highway rehabilitation, which um, has right. been kind of years and years coming, <laughs> so. Hopefully that's that, going to be a nice ride all the way from the windward side, all the way to town now. And well, now is that going to be in your your portfolio that all that's going on on the poly because that that's practically daily. And of course, one of the big issues I'm sure people ask. I hear people complaining about it all the time, especially after I talk about my being involved <laughs> in it. But what about doing some of that work at night? How would you? Is that you know, are those the kinds of things that come up that people suggest things to you like that and then you respond or uh, do you? Sure, yeah, I, I mean, yes, I know the neighbors have been very, 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 very patient <laughs> with the, the years of years of road work they've seen yeah. on the highway. Yes, I, I, I know. Um, I mean, yes, we, I mean, I kind of defer to the department. I, I think the department is trying its best to, you know, take into consideration these other runs. They, they knew it was going to be a long project, I, I do think they do try to minimize impact as much as they can while, you know, being able to like do it mm -hmm. effectively and efficiently uh, as quickly to like finish up as quickly as they can as well. Um, but it's also always happy to ask on behalf of people like, hey, is this something that can be done or not? Not sure if, mm -hmm. yeah, Nightwork's an option, but yeah. 
Well, I think that they ought to be doing it at night. But then, of course, you're going to have the hoorah about all the light that are up. Yeah. All night. Yes. So that's probably like a night and a noise issue. And yeah, the, there's two sides to every decision that they're going to be making. <laughs> okay. So here's a, what I think is a big item. Um, and uh, please let me know if I've not got that right. But talk about the budgeting for running a campaign. You know, Jenna, how how do you get started with that? How do you get help with that? Is it is it are you on your own? Or can you count on the parties? Or what, how do you, how do you think about that? And how does that work? Sure. Um, yes, that was something that scared me a lot when I <laughs> decided to run. Um, seems like such a weird thing to do to um, you know ask people for money for something that you're doing and to believe that you can succeed and do this crazy thing that you're trying to do. Um, definitely, yeah, I, I started small and safe. I asked some friends and family, <laughs> um, okay. yeah. uh -huh. you know, and then I think you just kind of try and get out there and meet as much people as possible. You meet um, advocates, you meet community groups, you meet whoever you can and just say, hey, I'm running for office and, you know, there's some costs associated with it. Um, any little bit helps. Could you make a donation to me? Um, yeah, I think that's how you kind of get started asking people for money. And then, you know, um, also doing things, um, meeting with some of the union PACs, um, seeing if they can lend any support, um, that kind of thing. I, I've been really um, happy and grateful and surprised that some of the neighbors I'm meeting um, as I go and they talk to me and they like what I'm saying have also um, started to donate a little bit to me. So that, that's been really nice. And I, I really appreciate those. Kind of donations too but yeah i think it's yeah well do you think you do you need to get big money for this kind of an office run for this campaign i mean um um i think as a first time like as a first time candidate i i just thought you know if uh, as much as i can raise all of it's just going to go to get my name out mm -hmm. so whatever I end up being able to do. Um, yeah, that's for the signs and banners that have been kind of been going up. That's for hopefully a couple mail pieces um, in a few weeks, just to kind of remind people of me. Um, so I have somebody to walk with as to kind of reinforce that, hey, remember I came by, hi, it's me again, um, all those little things. Um, well, have you worked up the gumption to ask everybody for money? Like when you make those door calls? I am getting, I, I still feel very weird. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that's been a challenge for me. I, I know I should be, get myself prepared to do that. that that's something I'm working on for sure. It, it, it's, it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing to kind of just start asking people for money, but I, I'm trying to get there. Yeah. Okay. So we've been talking a little bit about traffic and, and uh, crime and uh, that sort of thing on the district. So does the, does the, fraternity of police or does the police department uh, have a have a meeting with candidates to find out if they want to um does it anything come your way like that where people want to make a contribution or they want to support a candidate they want to hear the kinds of things you might do and that might be in their benefit too do you get any oh. implications like that or look to that um i haven't personally um but i mean i think a lot of the um, established students in practice, I mean, definitely as they're working with candidate or like elected officials, we'll probably uh, approach them directly. Um, I think I'm a little bit of a small time. <laughs> I guess they're so. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I don't have a, well, I don't have a platform per se, right? I, I don't have a voting record or a platform. So I think it's hard to expect um, outside groups to approach me. Um, a lot of it, I, I've written like some letters asking if I could interview and meet some of their leaders um, to see if our, um, you know, our uh, interests and um, align to see if maybe they'd want to support me then, but we'll see. <laughs> so I know, I know everyone's running around doing all those interviews right now. So we'll see how it turns out. Very good. I, this is the learning curve, right? And uh, it's just, I did want to know about that budget part of it. And then I, I also wanted to know if you could tell me, does the state give you any support? Do you, is there any kind of budget for running for office or does everybody just go in there with their with their small change? I mean, you do you get any budget at all to begin with? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. oh, you or, declare and then you sign it. And then do you get any money to help you from the state? No, I, sorry, I'm not as familiar with the public 
fun version of running for office. Um, I that that wasn't something I pursued. Um, so I I started from just zero since as a state worker I didn't have a lot to yeah. necessarily throw behind the campaign myself either. Well, good for you. I mean, you seem so energized. And and how is it going? We've just got to close in about a minute. So talk about how it's going, how you're feeling it's going to go, and what you expect. I am feeling optimistic. I think I know I've I've gotten to meet a lot of people so far um gonna meet a lot more between now and the primary um and I I think they've enjoyed talking story with me I've enjoyed talking story with them I think I I hope I come across as to them as you know someone who really cares about the community because that, that that's my main goal like I really do just want to you know help them further their interests and like live their best lives <laughs> in any way I can um, through government. Yeah. Great. Well, I know you've learned a lot. How long have you been campaigning? This started in January, right? Um, yeah, I think I started, I'm, I think I put papers maybe February. So we started maybe like February, but yeah. But we're, we're in the legislative session. So that was a little bit of a time crunch to get through first. And then now I'm on to like full-time campaigning. but. Yeah, it's been so kind of warm. Well, well, if you make it, if you if you're elected to the office, then after the two years and you're doing this again, or before the two years is over, <laughs> you're campaigning again. What do you? What outcomes do you expect you'll be able to say you have to offer the people as evidence of the the productivity of your your uh, time in the office? Sure. I mean, I hope budgetary wise, you know, I would be able to secure funding for um, a lot of the, the, the schools in the district. We also have, you know, healthcare systems um, throughout the district. Um, uh, Ho'opono, the School for the Blind um, is in there, all these little projects. Um, and we have a lot of nonprofits, a lot of Kilo Pacific, um, St. Francis, um, that I know come to the legislature for support every once in a while and hope to help them secure things for their projects. Um, and yeah, and a lot of those services that, you know, that we're hearing to kind of address, um, I think people are really concerned about their quality of life, um, largely because they don't feel, sometimes they start not feeling safe. So kind of, you know, building up those um, support systems to kind of transition people into secure things so that they're not out there committing crime or, you know, part of these homeless encampments that are making people kind of nervous. Um, so to kind of get those people some help to get back on their feet. Um, yeah. Yeah, and whatever else might come up, hopefully to hear a lot from the constituents about their thoughts and how I can represent their interests as well. Wonderful goals, wonderful goals. And then without opportunities, you can expand those and, and, and provide the service as the public servant you want to be. So I wish you luck. And I really appreciate having you on the show, the state of the state of Hawaii, and uh, to get a chance to have people see this video and you can bring it down anytime and use it after it's edited and put up. But just thank you for coming and being so forthcoming and answering all of my beginner questions really about how this all works from the inside out. So wish you luck and I'm sure the viewers do too. And uh, we'll have to close off because it's Aloha time, but this, this is the show, the state of the state of Hawaii. And we come to you every other Monday and we're looking at candidates running for office, especially for the first time in the state of Hawaii for the House and the Senate, and also for other executive offices um, that are open to. So thank you very much for your viewership. Aloha, mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, 
Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.